This player traveled through 30 million blocks for each nether highway access that spanned months to complete. Along the way, this player world downloaded everything, making spreadsheets, data, and much more. Why did this player torture himself? What was his goal? We'll review this data, showing many interesting things about 2B2T and how it could save many bases. This story begins around the beginning of 2021. After watching videos about it, a player named underscore XQ was curious about joining 2B2T in the plus X world border, so he bought priority queue and started his journey. Throughout his time on the server, he would explore monuments on highways and was always intrigued as to who had built them. The more he researched, the more he got accustomed to speed hacks, making it easier to explore, and eventually reached the plus X world border. He found a base with a mix of regular players and some players in the motorway extension gurus and allowed XQ to base there. By 2022, XQ had explored all 8 world borders in under 3 days, and new flying was AFKable with all the 1.19 testings and an electroflight module allowing him to go 720 kilometers an hour that would be gone when the server updates. He had an exciting thought, wouldn't it be cool to download all the monuments and borders in their current state? griefed or not, to preserve them in their 1.12 state, he would contact a player named Turbin, a fellow archiver, and ask if he was interested in the world downloads, which Turbin was, so XQ began his journey. The method for this project changed as time passed. XQ initially planned to use three accounts for traveling. However, given that it required nearly constant monitoring and manual input to go to the overworld and download the monuments, running three accounts wasn't feasible. He alternated between his accounts and those provided by the players Badnik, Offset Panda, and Kobe Fanboy. And with two accounts, XQ started flying a straight highway with one account and a diagonal on the other. He did this because diagonal flight speed would be around 440 kilometers an hour compared to the 720 kilometers an hour of straight highways, allowing him to not worry about the diagonals as much compared to monitoring two straight highways instead. The project officially started on June 12th, 2023. On the negative highway, XQ made it to around 25 million blocks out when a player named Iron Exception, another archivist and world downloader, suggested downloading the highways themselves. XQ was against this due to the sheer amount of storage space, but after thinking about it, he realized the potential of having all the highways downloaded, which will be revealed later. He quickly realized that diagonals would take much longer. For example, the plus Z straight highway was finished in a day, whereas the negative negative diagonal highway took 4 days. At this point, he opted to complete the straight highways first, as they were quicker. 3 straight highways were done in 5 days, and the last straight was finished a few days later. Up next were the plus X and Z, and plus X and negative Z highways. XQ started at a good pace, however, on June 23rd, disaster struck. Turbin, who had shown interest in the project, got back to XQ after a week of inactivity and mentioned that he should ensure Wither download is enabled as it's often turned off by default. When XQ went to check, to his dismay, it wasn't. At this point, he had already completed 5 to 8 highways in the nether that, combined with the burnout of doing nothing but downloading for a week straight, alongside his joining of the group's Spawn Builders Association and the Astral Brotherhood, meant the project was put on hold. About a month later, on July 27th, XQ stumbled across the spreadsheet tracking progress, and seeing the exported data on what he had already downloaded gave him the much needed motivation to continue the project. He contacted a player named Negative Entropy, known for his spawn projects and role in the spawn masons. XQ asked him what program they used to analyze the data for the 256k world download signs, and he mentioned a program called Save Searcher that was created by a player named the Porkchop underscore. This program scans world files for blocks and entities, and then exports the results to a spreadsheet. He picked up where he stopped, and set off on plus x plus z, negative x plus z, and plus x negative z. This was probably the worst part of the project for him, as the diagonals were inconsistently sized and couldn't be AFK'd. After completing those, all that was left was redoing three straight highways. Marking the end of the downloading, the analysis side was quite simple but also time consuming. Save Searcher can scan an entire world for any block or entity, then export it to a spreadsheet file. An example command for Save Searcher would look like this. 
This command scans the negative X highway's nether dimension for all signs and withers, then exports the results to a spreadsheet file. XQ ran commands to scan for the information he wanted, and then combined the spreadsheets to get the total numbers. It was easy for basics such as signs, withers, etc., as it was just 8 spreadsheets. But when it came to searching for shulker boxes, it got a little trickier as to search one highway for all shulker boxes, he had to add 17 different flags. This would result in 17 different spreadsheets for one highway, and 136 total. A player named THC Free helped by creating rejects queries to filter the data, making sorting through the results much more accessible. After around a week of scanning, filtering, and compiling results, with a total file size of just over 100 gigabytes with 148,259 files, we can show some interesting data. Since each nether highway was downloaded to each overworld border, XQ could determine each highway's average file size. Each stray highway had an average of 8.54 gigabytes. For the diagonals, the average was 16.17 gigabytes. There are over 2,800 withers throughout the highways. 1,215 of these belong to a player named Mad King Lambo. The plus X highway has the most withers with 1,586, and the plus X negative Z with only 4 withers. There are over 18,000 signs throughout the nether their highways, with the plus X highway having the most, with 2,807 signs total, and the plus X negative Z highway having the least, with 1,827 signs total. The top three players with the most signs are Lunch Katsu with 426 signs, Cody Smile 11 with 314 signs, and Dragon Food with 163 signs. However, since 2B2D is an ever-changing server, these numbers can be impacted as many players consider Cody Smile 11 to most likely have the most signs, given all he does is play signs. But they are usually close to spawn range and are destroyed quicker than Lunch Katsu's signs. Since XQ downloaded all monuments, we can determine the oldest signs. But anyone can put a fake year on a sign, and it was tricky to find this data. However, owing to an MBT change in Minecraft version 1.9, you can identify signs before that version. And as 2B2T updated to 1.9 on April 1st, 2016, any signs legitimately placed before then can be validated. Luckily, the Save Searcher mod has an option for exporting the raw MBT data of signs. Instead of just the text values, this makes it easy to filter the data and find older signs and colored ones too. If the MBT data has extra, it's after 1.9, and if it has text, it's pre 1.9. After filtering through the data, XQ found that there are two colored signs, with one dating back to 2018 from a well known player named R2B Aiton, and another colored sign saying, Doop. As for signs with pre 1.9 MBT formatting, out of 24,459 total signs, only two signs have the older data. These signs are in the overworld that says Exit and Zombie Spawner. At first glance, this may not sound interesting. However, after XQ hopped onto Turbin's archive server and headed to the coordinates, he found that the signs were at a base founded in 2013 named Avalon City, created by a player named Awesome Guy Monkey. I made a video about this base, and I'll leave a link in the description. There are over 16,500 ender chests on the nether highways. The plus X has the most, with 3,285, and the plus X negative Z has the least, with 1,150 ender chests. XQ tried finding out how many nether portals are on the highways. You can't get a specific number of portals without save searcher being modified, as it can only scan for portal blocks, not portals themselves. But he can give an estimation. Save searcher will scan for all portal blocks and provide a number, which will then be divided by 6 which is the number of portal blocks in a standard 2 wide 3 high portal. There are a total of 257,331 portal blocks. Dividing that by 6 will give you 42,888.5. Of course, this isn't an exact number, and doesn't account for if players made larger portals, so it's safe to assume there are over 40,000 nether portals on the highways. All of this data combined will help players who want to build a base already have a base and base hunters. XQ made a spreadsheet combining all of this information to see which has the most player interaction. In order of popularity, the plus X highway has the most player interaction.
totaling 7,699, with the least populated being the Plus X Negative Z Highway, totaling 2,985. Let's say you're a player who wants to build a base now that 2B2T has been updated to 1.19. Since the Plus X Highway is the most popular, you should probably travel on one of the diagonal highways, since all diagonals are the least traveled compared to the straight highways. The best diagonal will be to travel on the Plus X Negative Z. However, once this video is released, this data might change how players interact with the highways, so I would pick a random diagonal highway. After that, travel for at least 200,000 blocks in the nether, making you over a million blocks in the overworld. The farther you go, the better. Now that you are far out, you must pick an axis to travel off the highway. This can either be your X or Z coordinate. There will no longer be any highways to follow, so you have to travel in the open nether. You should ensure not to leave any tracks behind, like drop blocks or mine blocks that were not placed back, so that base hunters can follow your trail. Now that you have found a spot in the nether, you can make a nether portal and enjoy your new home. If you want to make it even harder for players to find you, get an alternate account to travel to the nether portal and break it, making it nearly impossible for players to find you. Notice that I said nearly impossible? I asked base hunters slash explorers, ranch and paulsteve007 how players find bases after the 1.19 update, and they said this. Base hunting has taken a massive blow after the 1.19 updates, as players can't follow chunk trails. Methods and strategies that players have been using for years are no longer useful. Vanilla flight using elytra and fireworks and riding horses without entity speed are the most reliable means of travel. Still, new modules are also coming out, like Bounce Elytra Fly, which is both in Future Client and Rusher Hack, and requires no fireworks. A public new chunks module uses copper ore and nether gold ore to determine 1.12 chunks versus 1.19 chunks, but thin trails where players initially skipped chunks since they were moving so fast are nearly impossible to follow now, especially with the rates of speed players can reliably travel. Lastly, there is no known method of seeing trails made in 1.19 terrain, so it's virtually impossible to find them if they don't modify the terrain. For already built bases, the best advice I can give to you is to build a new base in 1.19 chunks. Recently, there has been a powerful coordinate exploit in 1.12, which means potentially all bases in 1.12 chunks are compromised. A player named Enigma008 made a Reddit post discussing this. Rumors about a potential coordinate exploit started around late 2022, with players like Munmap and 1248 underscore test underscore user showing up at different bases and stashes. For months, these accounts mainly went sightseeing, while some stashes got stolen, and when 2B2T updated to 1.19, this exploit was patched. I might make a more detailed video about this in the future, since it seems pretty interesting. I'll leave a link to the highway report if you want to check it out for yourself, and tell me in the comments what information you learned was the most interesting.